Hello everybody, uh, it's Nate here. Just gonna go through a quick tutorial on how to do quick and easy bases for your Blood and Plunder models. Now this is the way I do it. Um, I know there's a lot of guys out there who do it different, but yeah, it's up to them. I'll show you my way. It's nice and easy and uh, you get you get good results. Uh, ties in well with the model, but doesn't distract at the same time. Now, as you no doubt know, um, let's just get that in focus. The Blood and Plunder models come with pre-molded bases, which have a wooden decking texture on them. So what I do is, even though I tend to do decks of my ships in a skeleton bone, kind of a light pine color, I actually do my bases in fur brown. One of the reasons for this is so that the bases look a bit distinct when you're, they're on a ship, but also I find the fur brown doesn't distract as much from the model where I find that the um, skeleton bones are a bit too bright. So I start, I start with a black undercoat. If you start with a fur brown undercoat, if that's your thing, then you can ignore this first step. So the first step is a little bit of paint from the palette. Let's get that out of the way. And then just a uh, brush, just brush it on. Now I'm not using a fancy brush here. It's just a, uh, um, nylon brush, a proline brush, um, and I just brush the paint on. It's probably if you start on a black undergo, it's probably gonna take a couple of coats. I'll um, through the magic of Kev's editing, um, skip that. I just want to quickly show you now the way I do it, um, is I always brush in the direction of the planks. Which, if I move my thumb, you'll be able to see. So, a little bit more paint on there. I've been a bit cheap. As you can see, I've already done a bunch already. And if you're wondering on the model itself, th these are European soldiers, which are one of the newer units to come out. Um, which Firelock have done, which can they have rules for 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 all all um, all nationalities except for natives. You can take them as European soldiers themselves, or they can be, for instance, uh, Spanish soldados. I hope I'm saying that right. Sorry to any Spanish speakers out there who I've just butchered your language. Um, or you use them as militia. Basically, uh, Firelock have a, a very um, customer-friendly attitude towards the, their models. Um, as long as you're not confusing them with with um, other other similarly armed units, um, you can or using the same models to use as different units, you can say use these as militia, as long as they, they're armed with the right weapons and you know your opponent can tell what they are. They're, they're very cool with your proxying, even in tournaments. So, there we go. Um, bring that in focus. You can see, I'll get a dry one. As you can see, it's a bit patchy still. So once they're all dry, because army paint, it does take a while to dry, I will come back and uh, do another coat. I won't show that. And then we'll come back and we'll get to the washing stage. Okay, catch you in a bit. Right, so I've got my uh, fur brown coats done, as you can see from nice even coat in the end that only took two coats so ready for the next step now next one I use is army painter dark tone the reason I use dark tone is because it gives the wood a nice deep finish I mean these have a beautiful grain on them 
so I'm going to highlight that as much as possible. Well, I want to bring it out as much as possible. Obviously, the highlighting stage is next. So this, I literally just apply it quite liberally. Again, I'm not using a great brush because I, I don't need to. Just making sure I've got no bubbles. Make sure I get in all the corners. Oops. Trying not to drop the model. You may notice at the moment I'm being quite slapdash with it. Like I'm not at all concerned if I'm getting any on like the feet of the mini. Because I'm just going to paint over that anyway. I mean, I'm going to make a right mess with the next stage. So I'm not too concerned at this point about neatness. I mean, for for all I am a, kind of quite a perfectionist when it comes to painting. I'm not saying I'm a perfect painter. I'm, I'm not. There's much better out there than me, but I do take pride in my, my painting. I'm also quite a, a sloppy painter when it comes to uh, the initial stages. Uh, I don't worry too much about the edges because I know I'm going to be painting over them anyway. Now, that's just me. I'm not saying you should do that, but that's just where I paint. So, uh, that's it. Just, as you can see, just a quick bit of dark tone, and that's that's that, really. Okay, um, well, I'm going to finish these guys off, leave them to dry, and we'll be back with the highlight stage. So, uh, see you in a bit. Okie dokie, it washes all dry, so now it's on to the last stage. Gonna dry brush the wood just to bring out that grain a bit more. Um, as you can see, the you can see it's pretty good at the moment. But I just want to make it pop that little bit more. It's a bit darker than I'd like. So for this, I use um, either bronze flesh, old GW bronze flesh. Don't know what's called these days. Don't much care. Got bronze flesh, or um, if you go out into Vallejo, it's a Vallejo model color, dark flesh. Uh, it's as you can see, it's pretty much the same color for what we're using it for. It'll do the same job. So, just give this a see. Yep, a little bit left in here. So. Oops, a bit of blue tack there just holds that in place for me. And uh, so just using a dry brush, you really do for this one make sure you get as m a good amount of paint off the brush. I just saw I didn't dip a lot in to begin with because you don't want to overwhelm it, you just want to pick out that grain. So, how I do it. I go 90 degrees to the grain and that just kind of gives you gives you a nice wood texture I mean I know you got you got this uh, there's a certain certain element on the internet who doesn't like the idea of dry brushing uh, but hey ho that's their choice I think it is a valid technique you know which I use especially for doing things like wood so as you can see that has brought the grain a bit more light on that. Now that has brought the grain right out on that guy. So I, th I think that looks great. So I'm going to leave that there. And the last step is just doing the rims on the bases because as you may have noticed, the rim's a bit sloppy at the moment. But you can now see why I do this step first before I paint it, paint anything on the model. Because, you know, dry brushing is not the most precise of uh, techniques. So, by doing that first, um... You know, meaning that I can get right and cover all the wood texture and not have to worry about having to repaint repaint feet and legs later. So just giving this 
I know I'm a big, big old hands in the way, sorry about that. Just giving this a quick black, you know, um, paint job. Put it on quite thick because, you know, the base is really going to get the most abuse. So, a decent thick coat. Followed by, obviously, when the mall's finished, a good, a good varnish coat will hopefully protect it from chipping. So, and there we go. Now, I recommend usually using a painting handle of some kind. I've got the little plastic pots which I use, which I just blue tack stuff on top of. But uh, yeah, it just stops handling the bases now. But there you go, there's one base complete. Just a rest of a model to do. So I'm going to leave it there, because I've got another 11 of these guys to get get painted up. And uh, well, I hope that's helped. Um, if you like the technique, leave a comment below if you don't like the technique uh, also leave a comment below if you've got any ideas any questions any suggestions to make it better uh, shoot it over i'm always happy to hear it and uh makes us all makes us all better painters at the end of the day so um hope you've enjoyed this and uh don't be shy see you guys around bye bye